Hey guys, Freighter22 here, and welcome back to part 3, the final part of my January 5th DVD massive update. So, um, here are the last titles that I had gotten. These next um, few I actually had gotten at FYE. There was a few, um, few uh, 90s films that I grew up watching and loving as a kid, so um, they were pretty, you know, pretty reasonable deals, so I finally picked them up. And the first one is uh, My Girl. Loved this movie as a kid, still love it to this day. Has a really great cast. Uh, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, Macaulay Culkin. Uh, just really, really great. This is a really underrated um, film. It's, you know, it's got some darker tones to it, but I think that's what I always, you know, liked. That there was a real serious nature to it, but it really, um, you know, it really demonstrated a lot about, you know, growing up and being a kid. Real, you know, really solid, underrated coming-of-age film. So absolutely check this one out if you guys have never seen it. I highly recommend this one. Um, in addition to that, I actually went ahead and bought My Girl 2. Yes, they made a sequel to My Girl, and My Girl 2 is actually, um, it's actually just as fun as My Girl 1. I, I enjoy both films, um, a lot, so both of them are, you know, great coming-of-age stories. I believe, you know, I, I truly believe that both of them are incredibly underrated. You know, I don't think people talk about these films enough, so um, I would definitely recommend for anybody who has never seen My Girl and My Girl 2, get out and see these, because these are some really great 90s coming-of-age stories that seems, um, it just seems like every year they're becoming um, less and less appreciated and, you know, just more and more lost. So I would definitely bust those out if you guys, you know, can find them. Next one I got was another uh, 90s film that I, you know, 90s uh, family film that I, you know, grew up really enjoying, and that is uh, The Indian in the Cover, directed by Frank Oz. And this is really cool. It's about a kid, um, and he, you know, he comes across uh, a magical uh, cover that, you know, when he puts an action figure or a toy in it, locks it, and then reopens it, it comes alive, and he uh, comes in encounter with an Indian action figure, and then, you know, it comes alive after putting it in the cover, and he develops this really strong... Um, relationship with it. It's just, you know, a really magical, um, fun family film. So if you haven't checked this one out, I'd definitely check it out. You know, you know, Frank Oz behind it, you know, Yoda and, you know, the wonderful, you know, work that he did with the Muppets. Um, this film can't be missed. It's a really great, um, children's classic. Uh, next one I got, I was never too crazy about this movie when I saw it in 2006. I remember seeing the trailers and thinking it looked so badass because I was a fan of of the original television show. I have all five seasons, but I, you know, it's just too damn confusing. They just really complicated the plot and the story a little too much. But, um, you know, I, I'm a completist, so I, this was like 750 at Walmart, so I was like, whatever, I'll grind my teeth and get it and maybe give it another chance down the road and, you know, maybe, uh, you know, discover something I missed the first time. But I'm talking about the 2006 adaptation of Miami Vice. I love Michael Mann, and I thought that he was going to be a great director considering he executive produced the original show. But, uh, like I said, the plot was just really confusing and a little frustrating at times. Although I was really pleased with the cast, and I think Colin Farrell and uh, Jamie Foxx were perfect people um, to do uh, to take over, um, you know, the new uh, Crockett and Tubbs. So I, I really enjoyed their casting a lot. So 750 at Walmart. Give it a try. You know, later down the road. Another one I got was another uh, 90s classic that I grew up loving, The Little Rascals. You can't go wrong with this film. Great, great TV, um, great uh, adaptation of the classic um, t um, you know, show from way back in the day. This was directed by Penelope Spheres. She did um, Wayne's World, a bunch of other stuff. She actually directed uh, the Decline of Western Civilization documentary. So she's got, like, a very uh, unique um, body of work behind her, very, you know, different things in her uh, in her bio in her resume. So this is, you know, a great uh, film that she had done. I always loved that one. Another one I got was uh, one that I had, but I just figured, you know, at Walmart, again, it was nine, bu nine bucks, I'd, I'd get the, I'd upgrade to the special collector's edition, and that is, of course, another, probably uh, one of Eddie Murphy's best, you know, hands down one of his best comedies, and that is the 1988 Coming to America. Can't go wrong with this, another reteaming of John Landis and Eddie Murphy, so this one is really, really solid. Get your asses out there and see that. If you've been living under a rock for the past 20 years and have not seen it, this is Eddie Murphy at his best best. Hands down best. Uh, next one, these ones I had actually got today, and these were all, all in the $5 bin. The next three were in the $5 bin, and this is um, the special edition of Meatballs. Another um, 
classic by uh, Bill Murray for five bucks. You couldn't go wrong, especially since this is like, you know, the special edition that came out a few years ago. So really, really pleased to have this one in the collection. I, I love, you know, the summer camp atmosphere and Bill Murray just being Bill Murray, you know, his best. So, so you know, solid, solid film. Next one I got was another, uh, you know, underrated 80s film, I think. Uh, it was, uh, was it produced? Yeah, it was executive produced by um, Steven Spielberg, and that is Batteries Not Included. Uh, I believe there's a sequel to it. I'm pretty sure. Or no, I don't think, there might not be, actually. I think it's just uh, just this one. But, um, yeah, I saw this um, probably about a few years ago, finally. I'm sure this was another film that I'd seen bits and pieces of growing up, but I couldn't recall seeing the whole thing. So I enjoy this one I Netflixed it. So for five bucks, I'm not going to pass it. This is another just solid, you know, fun little 80s movie to throw into the collection. So happy to have that one. Another one for five bucks that I didn't have was the 1989 Weekend at Bernie's, starring Andrew McCarthy, who surprisingly went to my high school as a teenager. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed this film. I was kind of bummed because I was digging through the $5 bin hoping to get, like, the sequel just to be a completist, but they didn't have it in the $5 bin or in the comedy section. So later down the road, I'm going to have to pick up the sequel. But for five bucks, this is a fun, you know, little comedy at the tail end of the 80s. Uh, and the last final three are two. These the next two they had a deal going on that if you bought uh they they were ten bucks each and if you bought two you got a five dollar um gift card free instantly. So I figured what the hell I'll take I'll blind buy two things uh, that I was actually curious about. This one I really wanted to see but. Uh, I never got around to seeing it in theaters, and that is the 2009 flick, State of Play. Uh, they had a pretty cool cast in this one. Russell Crowe, Ben Affleck, Rachel McAdams, and Helen Mirren. Um, cool little, like, political thriller, it looked like, and, uh, you know, with the cool casting, I mean, the trailer definitely intrigued me, but I just never got my ass around to see it, so for ten bucks, I figured this was definitely worthy of uh, blind buying, so uh, I'll definitely have to check this one out, see how this one fares out. Uh, the next one I got, and I'm not sure... Um, the, I remember the, the trailer looked pretty cool to me, but this is the unrated um, version of The Unborn, starring Gary Oldman and directed by uh, David S. Goyer, who did, you know, he did a bunch of stuff. He's like, he I think he co-wrote um, Batman Begins, and uh, I think he had something, I think he was... Um, had something to do with the Dark Knight. I th I'm not sure. I believe he definitely co-wrote um, Batman Begins, but he directed Blade Trinity. But I remember seeing the trailer for this, and I remember thinking that this looked like somewhat good. But the PG-13 rating kind of made me a little leery. But seeing that this was you know unrated, maybe it could be you know better. But I the trailer looked pretty kick-ass. So once I saw that this was one of the options I could pick from, I figured may as well take a chance on you know a newer horror flick. So I'm excited to check this one out. It looks pretty. Uh, looks like it could be pretty cool. And the final film that I got today was another uh, blind buy, but it was a Blu-ray, and it is the new film, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. I never read the book growing up or, you know, any of that stuff, but I remember seeing the trailer and thinking it, um, it looked pretty damn cool, so I asked, to my surprise, I went into Best Buy and to buy it this morning, and I didn't realize that um, Best Buy had a Blu-ray DVD combo, so this was, like, a real big bonus. It was, like, $25, and there's a coupon floating around, I believe you can find it if you go to dvd talk into the forum section if you go into dvd bargains there's a coupon floating around in one of the threads that'll give you uh three dollars off on the dvd or blu-ray of cloudy with a chance of meatball so be sure to print that out before you head out and buy this i saved myself three bucks on it but like i said i had never seen this film but um you know, I'm sure a film like this is probably just going to look really phenomenal on uh, on Blu-ray, so I'm really excited to check this one out. I'm sure I'll probably pop it into the Blu-ray player uh, this week to give it a try. So uh, that's that. Well, as you guys can see, this DVD update was really massive. Um, that's, you know, hence the reason it was broken up into three parts. So thanks again for sitting and tuning into all three parts. It was a blast to show you, you know, the massive update that I had gotten. So uh, as always, thanks again for tuning in. And uh, just to give you guys another update, you know, a, you know, a bit of a sneak peek. I have it on my bulletin on the on a on the YouTube channel, but the next Saturday Night Movie Drive-In Review will be on one of my favorite flicks of all times. Yes, I'm talking about 1979's Rock and Roll High School. So I think you guys can certainly look forward to that this Saturday, so do not miss out on that. It's definitely going to be a really fun film to review, so I'm really excited to shoot that episode. So come back on Saturday to the channel to check out my review of 1979's Rock and Roll High School. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. This is Frightener22.